By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to a brand new episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back again in Vienna for Vienna Geddon. And uh, today I have a very exciting match for you. This was played in round six, the last round of the Swiss. So this is the last match we're gonna watch before we jump into the top eight. And uh, it's gonna be an interesting one. We've got Jonathan sitting on the left. He's got a very interesting deck. He's playing Guardian Beast, our Giving Archaeologist, Sage of Latinam, and actually not that many artifacts. So this deck is a, it's a little puzzle to me. I think I kind of know what he does, but I'm not quite sure. Um, his opponent, Philip, now he is playing a deck that I've uh, I've seen before, or at least decks that are quite similar. It's white and blue, and then he's playing with the Triple S, Sarah Angels, Suchis, and Savannah Lions in this deck. So no Surrendips in this case. So gone for the other S, I guess the S of the Suchi. And um, it's just looking like a strong deck. We see a lot of these Triple S, these, these white blue flyers, these the deck kind of like decks. You know, we see them quite a lot. And this is, this is no exception, a very strong deck. I'm not surprised that uh, Philip's deck is doing quite well. And like I said, the deck of Jonathan, that's a bit more of a surprise to me. So I'm quite excited to see that deck. Now, before I start with the deck photos, first, a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we are back and ready to dive into those deck pictures and I'm actually going to start with the deck of uh, of Jonathan here. I mean, that's just fantastic. Guardian Beast, Argiving Archaeologist and Suchi all cramped together in one deck. What's not to love? Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Jonathan. So I've called it the beast. So first of all, because of the deck photo with his dog Stefan on it, which clearly is the beast, but also because he's playing with three guardian beasts. So I guess the guardian beast is one of the main, you know, creatures that he needs in this deck to work. But then, you know, the deck is a bit of a question mark to me. It reminds me a little bit of Beast Island and Beast Island is a deck where your goal is to get guardian beast and chaos orb on the battlefield together. Uh, because of course, then you've got this, this, combo of endless flips with the Chaos Orb because how it works is uh, Guardian Beast is a 2-4 creature for 4, 1 black and 3 from Arabian Nights um, and the ability is pretty unique because it says as long as Guardian Beast is untapped all your non-creature artifacts are indestructible, right? So you can flip your orb and then it doesn't destroy at the end of turn because it's indestructible. So it comes back into play tapped and then the next turn it untaps, you can flip again and as long as the Guardian Beast stays alive, you can continue flipping removing the entire board of your opponent, which is pretty devastating, of course. So I really like that. He's also playing with one transmute artifact to try to find that Chaos Orb. But what surprises me a little bit in this deck is that he's quite modest with the amount of artifacts. For example, he's only playing with one disc. You would expect more discs maybe in a build like this. Also, perhaps to go for copy artifacts as well. Uh, but he really chose another route, which is quite quite interesting to see. Um, let me just explain the reason why Nevernerl's Disc and Guardian Beast go together so well, is that Nevernerl's Disc, of course, comes into play for four, comes into play tap when it untaps, pay one, and then it destroys all artifacts, uh, all enchantments, and all creatures. But remember, all your non-creature artifacts are indestructible because of the Guardian Beast. So it destroys the Guardian Beast, yes, but then it comes back into play tapped because, you know, it's indestructible. And also your other artifacts cannot be destroyed by the disc. So you can get some nice value out of that. And again, he's only playing with, with a one-off disc. So it's it's almost kind of toolbox-like. But then again, for a toolbox deck, you would expect to see maybe more transmute artifacts. So it's kind of like a mix of several strategies, I guess. And then what I really love uh, is the fact that he's included these are giving archaeologists. They're one of my favorite cards. But at the same time, I'm kind of wonder. Like, what's their role in, in this specific deck, right? So it's, it's another little question mark for me. So our giving archaeologist is a 1-1 one, one creature from Antiquities, and for two white and tap, you can uh, uh, get back an artifact from your graveyard and get it back into your hand. So it's an archaeologist, right? It digs up the artifacts for you, 
very flavorful. Nickname of this card, by the way, is The Shirt, because you can barely see those pants. And uh, what I love about this is the art. Like, it's really not a magic figure, is it? It really looks like an archaeologist from the 70s. And I, I love that about old school magic, that inconsistency. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, just, it's just a favorite card. I don't think... I, I could see the synergy maybe here between... Uh, you know, the Sage of Letnam and the Archaeologist, because with Sage of Letnam, which is a 1-2 for 1 blue and 1, you can sack an artifact to draw a card. So let's say you sack a Mox to draw a card, then you can get that Mox back with your Archaeologist, play it again for 0, and, I mean, you kind of have a lot of value. You still got to tap the 2 blue, uh, sorry, two white, though, for the Archaeologist, but it's nice value, I guess. What I also like about it is that if you're in a situation where you kind of lost your Chaos Orb earlier before you had the Guardian Beast in play, and the Chaos Orb is there in your graveyard, it's still a great target to get back with your Archaeologist. Um, but still, I would have would have thought that perhaps a Reconstruction in this deck would work better uh, than the Archaeologist. And again, I'm really happy to see the Arche Archaeologist. And of course, if you can get the Archaeologist to live, you can get a lot of long-term value out of it. So I see that. Now, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, it's just, you know, that, that white control package, Disenchant, Swords... Um, yeah, we also have the balance in here, of course, the Black Splash, the Blue Power. What we don't see in this deck is a lot of counter magic. We only have that one Mana Drain. So um, he really needed, of course, slots, I guess, for the artifacts as well. We see four Felwer Stones. So I guess those Felwer Stones are great, by the way, to sack to your Sage or to your Transmute to kind of find that key uh, key artifact, uh, and, which is, of course, the uh, the Chaos Orb here in this deck. So a very interesting deck, a deck that I'm quite excited about. I'm hoping to see... The Archaeologist in action, because that's simply a card you don't see often. I've played with it a few times, also at tournaments. The result, it gets killed really, really fast. And I think that's where a card like Guardian Beast, for example, shines. Because of the four toughness, because it's black, so you cannot play Terra on it, for example. It just has that extra cushion that makes it a little bit harder to kill. In my experience, my humble experience, the Archaeologist gets killed so quickly. I hope not, because I love the card, so hopefully it hits the board. And Jonathan, you can use it in this game. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, and now let's take a look at the deck of your opponent, Philip. And here we see the deck of Philip. Now, this is a deck that you see more often, of course. It's blue-white. Sometimes people play blue-white with a little bit of red for direct damage. They usually splash into black cards like we see here as well, uh, Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. And then there's this thing with blue-white is you can go several ways. You can go blue-white control, where maybe you even play Creatureless with a Wrath of God, some extra books. So a little bit more towards the deck theme. Then you can play uh, blue-white flyers when you go Surrender, Befreed, Sarah Angels, perhaps some moats. And then, of course, you also have this version where you go, we call it Triple S, Savannah Line, Suchi, and Sarah Angel. Um, so there's just different directions to go. And what they have in common is that all those decks are quite good. <laughs> They're all pretty strong. Um, and, and for obvious reasons, because you've got good creatures in the form of Sarah Angel. You know, you know, Suchi, of course, is great in Swedish. But also you have that control package where you go with four counter spells, Mana Drain. They're all in here. And, of course, your Disenchants and your Swords. And because you're playing with blue, you've got the blue power. So you just, you have a very like complete deck. In this case, he's also splashing a little red in the sideboard for those red elemental blasts, which, which I understand because you're going to run into a lot of blue, of course, because, you know, the power is blue. Um, so this, this is just a strong deck. I'm not surprised that this deck is doing so well. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the top eight, we're going to see a lot of these type of decks combined perhaps with robots decks. I also saw a lot of uh, robot type of decks here as well so I that's kind of my prediction for the top eight remember we're already here in round six so this is the last round before we go into that uh, top eight so this kind of what I expect to see in the top eight so just a very strong deck here by Philip and now that we've looked at both of the decks this only means one thing and that is that we are ready yes yes we are ready to dive into this match round number six last match of the Swiss here at Vienna Geden. let's go Game number one here of round number six, the last round in the Swiss here at Vienna. Geden. Philip here taking a mulligan going down to six. He's playing blue-white, the triple S variant with uh, Savannah Lines, Suchi, and a Sarah Angel. There we see the Savannah Lines passing their turn to Jonathan. Jonathan playing three colors, white, blue, and black. And it's kind of an artifact-centered strategy. He's playing with Guardian Beasts, Argiving Archaeologists, and Sages of Latinam. So I'm really looking forward to see some of the cards in Jonathan's deck in action, starting here uh, with a pretty good opening, ramping up here with Mox Sapphire, and of course the Felwer Stone back to Philip here with his Mishra's Factory, getting in there for two. So Jonathan probably going to drop to 18, 
And now let's hope that both players will also track their scores with the dice. There's a recall in hand. There we see a Mishra's factory. You also see a uh, Nevenerol's disc. Don't think he's going to play that out. Okay, here we go. Guardian Beast hitting the table. So 2-4 creature from Arabian Nights. And remember, while the Guardian Beast is untapped, all the non-creature artifacts of Jonathan are indestructible. There's a quick swords to plowshares, though. So Guardian Beast down. There's the attack for 4. And look at that. Starting to track his life total with the dice. Thank you for that. He's now on 16. Passing the turn back here to Jonathan. So Jonathan could consider hitting Becky for two by animating the factory. We also see a disenchant there in hand. Passing the turn, missing a land drop. That is tough. And after Philip, you could consider using your strip maybe to take care of one of the lands. Could go, of course, for the factory and then swing in for four. And uh, it looks, did I see... Can't really see what's in hand. Is that a Black Lotus? Not quite sure. Anyway, he passed the turn and also missed the land drop. Jonathan now finding a Tundra from the top of his deck. There's another Guardian Beast. Yeah, that's a great blocker for the Lion. There's a pass. Suchi from the top, I believe. So no land still for Philip. Okay, there's the Black Lotus. So it was a Black Lotus in hand. Cracking the Lotus. Ooh, tapping out completely. Or are we going to see, yep, a Brain Geyser. I thought he would do that, actually, when he started tapping out for six. That or a Mind Twist, but it was a Brain Geyser. So probably going to find some lands in there, drawing uh, four cards in total. There's a Tundra. There's Alliance. Passing the turn. There's another land for Jonathan. So really finding the lands now. It looks like he's got a disenchant in hand, a swords to plowshares, a Nevenerals disc, and a recall. Not really the best cards uh, to have at the moment. I mean, I guess you could swords one of the lions. Do you really need to? Do you want to? Yeah, just a pass here. Of course, the Guardian Beast being a great blocker in this uh, situation, being a 2-4. There's another disenchant from the top. So just a lot of answers, not really any action. Passing the turn. Becky, look at that. Philip not doing anything. I wonder why. Could he have, for example, a library? Yep, yeah, there's a library in hand. Yeah. I was all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute. He just passed the turn in the last two turns without doing anything. But yeah, if you've got that low in hand, it makes sense. I believe that was a soul ring there from the top. There's the soul ring. Passing the turn. Let's see what Jonathan can do. I mean, the thing is, yes, you can play very passive, but as soon as that Loa hits, I mean, you got to do something. you got to take action. There's a Nevenerals Disc. Not looking great on this board. It is, of course, interesting with the Guardian Beast because you can destroy the, uh, the disc or pop the disc, I should say, and then the disc comes back tapped because of the Guardian Beast. And, of course, all your other non-creature artifacts are indestructible, so they don't uh, get destroyed by your disc. So it could be useful, but you are going to lose, of course, your Guardian Beast. And I mean, look at the side of Philip there on the table. He, he doesn't have a lot that you want to destroy. Those two lines, now the Mox Ruby and the uh, Soul Ring. There's the attack for two. So Philip's thinking, you know what? If you're going to pop the disc, I might as well just attack. So there we see the block. So that means two damage, I believe, here. Or not. There we see uh, Swords to Plowshares. So I think by playing that Swords, he's also kind of saying that, you know, he's not going to use the disc. Or else he would have just taken the two and, you know, perhaps used the disc uh, the next turn. So he's going to untap here, also untap the disc. Finding a Mox Jet there from the top. So he's got two disenchants, a Mox Jet, a Swords, and a Recall. There's just not a lot going on here for Jonathan passing the turn back to Philip. Philip, of course, having a lot of cards, but also not really putting any pressure on. You could consider, if you're Philip, to say, you know what, I'm going to play out that Suchi to kind of tempt Jonathan to, uh, to use the disc. And if he doesn't use the disc, fine, I'm just going to keep attacking. So I wonder what he's going to do.
I mean, the problem is, I guess, still for Philip, if he pops the disc, the disc will just come back because of the Guardian Beast. So I guess the strategy of just playing out a Suchi for pressure is a really bad one, by the way, I just realized. He needs to first find an answer to the Guardian Beast. So tapping two, there's a Time Walk, okay. He does have a Swords in hand, so perhaps his Time Walk is to lure out a potential counter spell. Now remember, of course, Philip doesn't know the amount of counter spells that Jonathan is playing. And we know that Jonathan is only playing a single Mana Drain. But if you're Philip, you don't know that. And you just see that, that, that grip of cards that Jonathan has. I believe he's got like six or seven in hand. He's got enough blue open. So you're, of course, you're worried about counter magic. There we see a single line. So he's putting a little pressure on the board, you could say. But that lines is not going to do much with the Guardian Beast. Are we going to see a Swords now? There's another Factory. Four Factories there on the board. I mean, that's another reason to, to try to get rid of the Beast and then the Disenchant. On the disc, perhaps. But he's not doing it. Just pass the turn. Back to Jonathan. It's going to be really interesting to see how uh, Philip is going to try to play this out. He's got, of course, the active library. So, you know, what often happens with these Loa games is the player that has the Loa is, you know, just trying not to lose. Because you know you're going to win eventually if you have that active Loa. And it usually, in my case, also means that I start playing slower because I know I should win it with the lowest. So I start thinking deeper about my thoughts. It's not something that I do on purpose. Plus, of course, when you have a Loa, you usually have eight or even nine cards in hand. You simply have more options. He's untapping here again. I believe he's got nine in hand now. There's a Mox Pearl dropping the uh, Volcanic here. So still eight in hand. Going through the motion. I wonder if he's going to just uh, play out the Pearl and pass. So he's got two Suchis there. He's got a Sarah Angel. I think a Disenchant in hand. Look at that's going to discard. I wonder why he's not just playing it out. Maybe there's a reason. Anyway, look at what, uh, let's look at what Jonathan can do. Also has a lot of cards in hand. Could play out, for example, the Felwer Stone. Has that Swords, but why would you use it? There's no uh, direct danger playing out the uh, Black Lotus here. Passing the turn. Again, here we see Philip using... Uh, the low here on end step, so nine cards in hand again. There's a City of Brass, so I wonder if he's now going to discard the Jet or if he's going to play the Jet. He is going to play the Jet, passing the turn, seven in hand. And I really wonder when Philip will make that decision to just, you know, Swords and Disenchant. Perhaps he's simply waiting for Jonathan to tap out or something that he knows that he cannot have any counter magic. Yeah, discarding the city, passing the turn. So it's kind of a standstill here. And eventually that should be better for Philip since he's drawing extra cards. So he's going to tap two here. What are we going to see? There's that Felwer Stone we saw earlier, passing the turn. So Jonathan just kind of sticking to seven, passing. He's not in a rush here. We see, I believe, a Mox Sapphire from the top. Asking about cards in hand, I believe it's seven. Is that another Disenchant? Then he should have eight. They're dropping the Sapphire, probably now going to seven. Discarding the Suchi, so still having an extra card in hand. And it's so interesting here. I, I think I would have just played out the Suchi. Maybe I'm missing something. But I mean, maybe that Suchi can kind of get Jonathan to the point where... He's going to pop the disc. Yeah, I guess you don't want to if you're Philip. Because if he's going to pop the disc, he can use it again. Although in response to him popping the disc, you could play your swords. Yeah, I guess that's why Philip is not playing the Suchi, right? If he plays the Suchi and Jonathan pops the disc, and he's also going to lose his Mox and his Sol Ring and his, uh, his line, he's really kind of waiting for the right moment, I think, to play that, that swords and to perhaps play the Disenchant. He was seen Argivian Archaeologist, by the way. I'm really happy that this uh, is finding its way here to the table. Such a beautiful card, a 1-1 creature from Antiquities. Two white and tap, and you can return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Of course, Jonathan only has that single sword in his graveyard, I believe. And that Guardian Beast there is exiled. And yeah, Philip just keeps on drawing cards. I really wonder where this game is going to take us. I mean, eventually you would expect Philip to win here. Okay, this is huge. There's a Swords to Plowshares. And Jonathan, of course, we know has no Counterspell in hand. He is taking a long time here to think. 
Perhaps he's considering popping the disc in response. The thing though is he's then also going to kill his own archaeologist. But I mean now at least you still get value and your disc comes back tapped. So it stays in the game. So Jonathan really in the tank. Looking at his hand. Does have, of course, the recall as well. Like if he if he pops a disc, that's another reason to do it. The Guardian Beast is not exiled, but goes to the graveyard. And then he can get it back later with the recall. But he's, uh, he's allowing it, going to 18, not responding to this. And are we going to see Philip now and Step also trying to fire off that uh, disenchant on the disc? That would make kind of sense. There's the disenchant. Now, is he going to pop it? If he does, I mean, he destroys his own artifacts. And I mean, the silver lining, I guess, here for Jonathan is that he now has that archaeologist. But I mean, Philip is drawing so many cards, maybe he also has a backup sword to plowshares there. Anyway, first going to draw card number seven, I believe. Exactly, then he's going to draw card number eight. There's a counter spell in hand. But no removal, I believe. So that means that actually, Jonathan can start using the archaeologist to do some digging, get the disc back. But then, of course, Philip could consider uh, countering that disc when, uh, or Philip could consider countering that disc when Jonathan plays it out. Yeah, and Philip here going for his hand, trying to figure out what he wants to do. Just passing the turn here. So Philip playing very passively. For example, he could have uh, could have attacked with one of the factories. Remember, he's got four, so he can pump it up to a 5-5, five five, right? I mean, it's kind of insane having four factories, but just playing very defensively at the moment. There's another stone passing the turn. So also, Jonathan didn't use the archaeologist on end step. There's the pass. I wonder, okay, gonna tap. Okay, there's a Suchi, so I guess I guess we're going to see a little bit of pressure here. Suchi hitting the board. And now, of course, Jonathan on end step can use the archaeologist, get back the disc, play out the disc. Another line here is to play a sword or a disenchant. Look at that hand. Two swords, plowshares, two disenchants. So it has a lot of weapons against that lonely Suchi. It's going to tap. Yeah, it's going to use the archaeologist. Hey, man, I'm happy we're seeing archaeologists being used. Yes, yes. I mean, that's always a nice moment. There's a Sage of Latinam. He's getting all the old guys together. Not playing out the disc. That's also interesting, right? Okay, we do see a counter spell here. So maybe now he's going to play out the disc. So countering away the Sage. Still having the disc in hand. The nice thing is if he plays the disc and it gets countered away, he can get it back again with the Archaeologist. So it's kind of funny. In a way, I mean, you, you could argue that maybe it would have been better to first play out the disc, see if he's going to counter it, and play out the Sage after. It's going to tap four. Here we see the disc again. Two disenchants in hand there. I mean, if you're Philip, you could also just say, you know what, I'm just going to keep disenchanting it exactly, and I'm just going to swing in with Suchi, swing in with my factories, swing in with the lion. I mean, you can deal a lot of damage. Remember, he also still has that strip to take care of that one factory on the side of Jonathan. I mean, if he takes care, if he strips the, the factory, attacks with, with all his factories, the Lion and the Suchi, you're talking about 14 points of damage. He's on 18. He'll drop to 4 and you'll kill him the next turn. I wonder if he's going to take that risk, though. I guess not. Tapping a lot here. What does he have? Could this be the Mind Twist? Perhaps already played the Brain Geyser. Yep, it's the Mind Twist. Yeah, and this is brutal. Now, of course, in response, he can start destroying some creatures here. There's the first sword. It's going to take care of the Suchi. I believe Philip was in 22, so he's going to get four more. going to go to 26. They've got an interesting way of, of keeping the score. <laughs> Yeah, I think Jonathan's showing it now. The 6 is the light. You're on 20 plus this dice. So 26, I guess. 
But yeah, this mind twist, like you're already losing and now there's this twist. That's also a thing with Loa. Because, you, because your opponent is drawing a card extra, probably going to find that mind twist, which makes it even more disastrous. There's the other uh, plow. So I guess Philip here on 28. Doesn't really matter at this stage. I mean, okay, gonna tap more, gonna maybe play out a disenchant as well. There's the disenchant. I mean, it doesn't really matter here. I guess, I guess, yeah, soul ring kind of makes sense. I mean, he's got black mana with city of brass underground sea. He's got enough blue mana, so I mean, you could you could have taken out the maybe the mox jet. Thinking maybe he plays like a single fireball or something. Take out the jet. Then again, he's got the City of Brass anyway. So, yeah, I can see why you would go for the Sol Ring here. And now Jonathan, of course, in top deck mode. Still has the Archaeologist, go, uh, though. Good go for Archaeologist. And get back that disc. Why not? What else are you going to do? He's got enough mana. I like this, by the way, that this Archaeologist is powered by artifact mana. Using the power of the Felwer Stone. To get back this disc. I like the flavor of this move. Getting back. Wow man. The disc keeps coming back. It's been disenchanted twice. Of course still comes back into play. Tapped. And there's the pass. Are we going to see a disenchant again? Yeah again a disenchant. Why not? And remember, Philip still has, it's kind of in the glare zone there, but Philip still has four Mistress factories. So he could, I mean, he could just strip the factory of Jonathan, attack for eight, put him on five. I mean, it sounds, it sounds like a sensible move to me. But let's see, I think that's an Ancestral Recall, by the way, from the top. So he's got, I believe, eight cards in hand. One of them is Ancestral Recall. That's insane. Now he's going through the graveyard, so I mean, he's played out three disenchants and two swords to plowshares, and just a single counter spell. Also, a demonic tutor there in hand for Philip. I wonder what you want to tutor for at this stage. Also, look at his library; is getting kind of thin. Maybe if you're Jonathan, you think I'm just going to try to survive and let Philip deck himself. I mean, he has played a Brain Geyser, and he's got the Necessary in hand, and he's been having that low up, what, forever? So, he's been drawing a lot of extra cards. Yeah, I think he's thinking about that Demonic. I wonder what you're going to look up, though. A Recall, perhaps? Yeah, Recall would maybe be the best option, right? Recall, get back your Time Walk. And then you can try to just swing twice with your Mistress Factory army. Don't know if he's got, if he's got enough mana to do that all. But uh, that could be a line. I mean, if you want to get back Time Walk and let's say a counter spell, you got to recall for four. And then you do, yeah, then you need two mana separate to play your Time Walk. Okay, but I mean, you can still, you can still deal some serious damage. And you can see Philip like asking every time, are you going to counter something? Because he hasn't seen a single counter spell from Jonathan. And of course, we know that it's because he's only playing a single mana drain. But again, if you're, John if you're Philip, you don't know that. You think, hey, he's playing with blue. Probably plays with four counter spells. So let's see what he's going to do. Going to tap three mana here. Or going to tap five. Okay. I believe those are two factories there in the glare zone. Is that it? Yeah, that's a recall, I believe. There's the recall. So playing a recall for two. I mean, his graveyard is so full of beautiful stuff. Wow, look at that. Sarah in the bin and the planes. And goes, uh, yeah, goes for the extra counterspell. Already has a counterspell in hand. But yeah, I think Philip wants to be extra sure. Again, when you have that active low, you're focused on not losing. Usually, instead of winning. And there we see the time walk. And now he still has some mana open. Yeah, now he's going to take care of the factory. So I think now he's going to swing in. 
You can animate them. Um, get in here for for four. Could pump. Make it five damage. So he's gonna drop to thirteen. And then, of course, take that extra turn. So then he can hit him for eight, put him on five. But I think there's another turn in it here for uh, for Jonathan. Again, getting that extra card with the Loa. It's such, such an insane card. It's so powerful. And uh, tapping four here. Gonna swing in for eight. It's gonna put him on five. There's a Tundra, passing the turn. Only five life left for Jonathan needs something really, 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 really good. Let's see what he can find. I mean, could get the disc back again. Oh, this is nice. Transmute artifact. I'm liking it. There's a tap though, there's a counter spell. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, and exactly. Jonathan, you're picking up the cards. That's the end of the road, but Actually, it's not because it's just game one. Uh, so both these players are going to dive into their sideboards and uh, I will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Oh, look at that Loa game one. Okay, sorry, turn one, of course. Game number two, turn one. And uh, yeah, Jonathan here starting with that library. He lost the first game and now he's got the uh, library of Alexandria. That is pretty brutal. Oh, there's a mind twist though. I'm like twisting for two. I mean, this is good. If you're Jonathan, you're right. Are you kidding me? But it is happening. Remember, he's on six. Now he's going to lose two, going to go down to four. And then I wonder what he's going to do next turn. Going to lose a Felwer Stone. Ooh, that Brain Geyser. That's annoying because with that Brain Geyser in hand, you could go like, okay, I'm just going to empty my hand. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to slowly going to work towards this Brain Geyser. I believe he's got a Mox in hand, Sarah Angel, Felwer Stone. Is that a Disenchant there? Or another... Oh, it's a Strip Mine. Okay, so he could play that. I mean, do you want to strip the land? Yeah, I think you don't here, right? You just want to pass. Also because there are no other lands in hand for Jonathan. There we see the Tundra. So despite that turn one Loa, it's not looking great for him. There's a Suchi. That is tough. Guardian Beast from the top. I mean, he could go for Felwerstone. Yeah, then he can go Felwerstone. If that card's a Disenchant, he can then tap Felwerstone and lower to Disenchant the Suchi. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. The problem here is, of course, for Jonathan, only two cards left in hand. So that Loa is not looking very powerful at the moment. Does have the right mana because of the Felwerstone to play out the Guardian Beast. Let's first see what Philip can do playing out a factory. Oh, there's a Lotus, two cards in hand for him. Oh, does he have a Brain Geyser? Seriously? Oh, man. Oh, and you can see Jonathan like, what? whatever, man. You know, if you have everything, you have everything. I mean, this is just a perfect scenario again for Philip. You know, remember in game one, he also had Black Lotus and Brain Geyser. And there's little you can do if you're Jonathan, really. I mean... Hasn't made any any mistakes here, in my opinion, at least. And and there's just nothing you can do, you know. You have that mind twist, what can you do? You got this brain geyser. And I think if you're Jonathan, you kind of know, okay, I think I've lost again. But just keep top decking, who knows. We see a uh, red elemental blast in hand there by Philip, by the way, coming in from the sideboard. There's a volcanic island. So even if he finds, for example, uh, Ancestral Recall to try to get back, you will uh, be just slammed by that uh, red elemental blast. And I guess it's, I mean, it's good strategy, right? To play with those Volcanics and have your Red Elemental Blast in the side. You could even consider playing one in the main. We've seen that in this tournament as well. There's a Sarah Angel here by, uh, by Philip. There's a Sarah as well. Okay, so Sarah, Sarah. I believe we also see a Chaos Orb in hand for Philip here. Really thinking about what to do. A balance in hand there as well. Tapping two. Okay, he's going to flip. I like it. Let's do some flipping. Let's do some flipping. 
It's a hit. It's a bit of a... Ah. Could have rotated a bit more, but okay, it's a hit. It's a hit. And I think both of these players are, are, are playing for a top eight position. So there is some pressure, of course. Going to play the time walk, untap, upkeep, draw. I mean, it, this is, it, it's so good here for Philip. He's just drawing everything, which is great for him. But of course, for me as a neutral commentator, I, uh, I always uh, like to see uh, matches that are a little bit closer. There's the pass. He's in top decking mode. There's a gem day tone, but I mean, it's not going to resolve, is it? I mean, you got to play it out, right? You got to give it a try. Okay, he's going to go for Guardian Beast first, perhaps. If that was a beast, you could go beast first, hope it resolves. Which I think it, it, it's not, and then go for book. I mean, in a way, it makes more sense to, to play the beast first, right? Because you can block the factory and... If it sticks, then you know that if your tome then sticks, then you can no longer get rid of it with the disenchant. So he is going to tap for it. Looks like he is going to go for the tome. I mean, I'm not even sure if that is a guardian beast there in his hand, by the way. He was flicking pretty quick, so I couldn't really see. There's a jam day tome. I mean, Philip could consider countering it here. I believe he's got a counter spell in hand. I would really consider just a pass, no counter spell. Maybe he's got a, oh, he's got a divine offering. Yeah, that's much better. That's a much better option. He's gonna gain four, gonna go up to 24. Another factory, so he can now swing for three. Plays out the balance. Exactly, I think that was a mistake, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why would you balance here? That's like a, a nice suicide. But anyway, attacking here, exactly playing out the factory instead. Dealing seven. Only five measly life left here for Jonathan. And yeah, I have to say I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed here in game two. Uh, again, there's nothing Jonathan could have done. Sometimes your opponent just draws everything. Now we see that Guardian Beast... And uh, I guess it, it even sticks. I mean, why would you counter it? You can just attack next turn with your two factories and your Sarah, and you can kill Jonathan here. There's the untap. Upkeep draw. So uh, it's going to be a win here for Philip, I believe. Even if he has a Swords in hand, I believe Philip has counter magic up. There's the attack. That's it. So Philip winning here. 0-2. And uh, wow, I mean, the second game went very, very fast, especially when you compare it to that first game. And again, man, Jonathan, I think you deserve better, but sometimes your opponent just has all the answers. And uh, Philip, of course, congratulations. I believe you are going to go into the top eight. And talking about the top eight, please join us again next week for our first top eight match from Vienna again. And remember, I'm going to show you the top eight the semifinals, and of course the finals of this tournament. So we are not done yet. And I'm really looking forward to go into that top eight. Before you go, please take a moment to share, like, and comment uh, on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and find out, find out how you can get your name into the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Samba Kazik! <laughs> <laughs> 